Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and in this video I'm going to show you folks a very easy way of applying backing formula to your stones for cabbing. The material that I'm going to be using as a backing formula in this video today is going to be JB Weld's Steel Stick, a very common two-part metal epoxy that is used by a lot of people to back their stones. There's a few different reasons why you might want a backing formula, um, one of which is because the material is just too thin. I almost always only back turquoise, and when I have very, very thin pieces of turquoise, they're just not going to make it when I'm cabbing. So I will often back them with some kind of backing formula, and it gives it lots of resilience when I'm cabbing. It's not gonna crumble or snap in my fingers. Yeah, it just makes it a lot easier when they're very thin pieces, like these two pieces here. Also, this piece gets very, very thin right there. Another reason why you might want to use backing formula is because your material is crumbling under your fingers and it really stinks. I love this yellow Hubei Mountain Turquoise. I love yellow turquoise. It's not my most favorite material. Oh, there it went. And, uh, but this material is just so crumbly that it just breaks. And instead of stabilizing using like glue and like a vacuum pump or however people like to stabilize, there's many different ways, you can apply a backing formula. This is number eight turquoise. I actually did not back these pieces or cab these pieces, these were gifts. But a lot of number eight is very crumbly. And you can apply a backing formula instead of stabilizing the material to keep it together and make it able to be capped. And one of the other reasons that I can think of at the moment for wanting to back stones is as a cushion or to push the material up. If you're working a piece of jewelry that has a large bezel, you're not going to want to use a thin piece of stone and then just fold that large bezel over the piece. If you're already done bezeling the piece and you're trying to replace the stone, you're not going to want to like cut the metal bezel or anything. You're going to want to push the stone up. So sometimes you'll see people apply backing formula to a stone that doesn't even need it just to push it up. This also cushions the stone and makes it a lot more resilient. In the past, I've seen people use sawdust. I've even had the pleasure of seeing a ring that I was repairing that had peyote seeds on the back, pushing the stone up and cushioning it at the same time. There's lots and lots and lots of different ways of backing a stone, um, like making backing formulas. This is the JB Weld that I will be showing you today. It's probably the easiest and most accessible material for making backing formulas for stones. These are also the JB Weld. I use it a lot. This, I believe, is DevCon. DevCon is a very commonly used backing formula. It is quite a bit larger of an investment because you have to buy the two parts in the jars and they go for a lot more than the JB Weld does, but I do think the DevCon leaves a much nicer finish. It's not as metallic-y looking. These two very old pieces of turquoise, I don't even remember where I got them, beautiful unstabilized pieces, are backed with a black formula that I also believe is DevCon. I could be wrong, and there's almost no way of telling. Besides the JB Weld stick putty that I got, they had a two-part putty. And I do believe that this perhaps is a darker, less metallic looking mixture. It was the same weight as this putty, so I did not get it. And there was also like a white, like waterproof putty that I'm sure would have worked. But, you know, in most cases, I think the darker backing formulas look better on turquoise. But if you have anything you think would look good with white, you could totally use this stuff. In the past, I've met people 
that have claimed to have made their own backing formulas from like collecting sludge from their lapidary machines and just mixing it with epoxy. I had the pleasure of a gentleman in my Buffalo Thunder video tell me a formula that he makes using a recipe of like grout in like Defcon or Metal Putty and stuff. And recently on a group on Facebook called Let's Talk Turquoise, a gentleman shared with me a very interesting recipe for a backing formula that somebody shared with him. I almost forgot to share these ones with you folks. This is something really old and definitely like a homebrew formula. I used a nail to dop these and put them in acetone and it totally just ate away the backing formula. These stones were not very fragile so the backing formula was kind of just like a cushion and to maybe ease the cutting. So I didn't really mind that these got dissolved. But this was probably the most interesting packing formula I have ever seen. Maybe a grout or something? I really don't know. It is very weird. I bought uh, about a pound of these already backed from the Tucson Gym and Mineral Show during the Miners Co-op. And there are some stunning pieces with some really weird backing formula. So there's lots of different types of backing formulas. You can easily make your own. Now, when it comes to backed turquoise and other stones, I do not really think it's fair to weigh the stone and charge by like weight, like by the carat or the gram. You know, you're going to be paying a lot more money if you're doing weight for the backing formula than you would be for the turquoise. You know, this stuff is a lot heavier than the material in most cases. So I often see it being sold by the piece. I really feel weird when people, you know, throw a backing formula piece on a scale to sell. It just doesn't seem right to me, but that's someone else's business, and that's just my opinion. I collect every single piece of scrap turquoise that I cut or that I get in a lot or whatever. A lot of the little tiny chips will end up being like chip and lay or like mosaic and stuff, but a lot of these small pieces are totally good enough to be backed and to be capped. A lot of them would not survive being cut if they weren't backed, but a lot of them totally would. So this can help you folks if you have, you know, smaller pieces that you're worried might not make it if you were trying to cut or whatnot. Anyway, I can go on and on forever talking, but let's use this stuff. I'm going to stick it to the back after I mix it up to a piece and maybe show you folks a little bit how you can easily use sandpaper to flush the back of the turquoise backed piece instead of using a flat lap. I use a flat lap because I have one, but you will sand a piece so you folks without one can see what's going on. Okay, so I dug through this bag of turquoise to find a couple pieces that could really, you know, be helped by being backed. And I found this piece of number eight turquoise. This was given to me by Phoenix good friend of mine because it was crumbling when she was trying to cab it so this would be perfect so this would be a perfect piece to be backed both sides are pretty cute but this side has more material that we're looking for in the middle so we're going to back this side and then I found this piece here this is a piece of kingman turquoise green kingman turquoise and it had this crack in this chip here I stabilized it a little bit using some thin super glue that I have for Lou 3 work, guitar repair. And I stabilized that. And I'm going to hide this chip in this crack by putting backing formula on it. So I'm going to back these up. And then I'm going to cab them, probably off camera. I wear gloves when I work with the steel stick because it gets all over my fingers. You can take it off. You could probably wash your hands with some kind of chemical something, but I'm really not into that. And uh, yeah, I wear gloves. You don't have to wear gloves. That's just what I do. All right, got the steel stick. Gonna crack it open. So it actually is a two-part putty. I take a knife and I cut off a bit 
a little does go a long way. And I mix it up. Make sure to fold it into itself to where the black mixes with the gray. That's what activates this. So this stuff actually does harden a little bit faster in my experience than regular like five minute epoxy. And when it's unlike regular epoxy, when it starts to get hard, you really can't work with it anymore. So that's looking pretty good. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna clean the pieces to make sure that they stick really well. I'm just gonna wipe these on my work pants. Okay, clean enough. Little spray bottle. You don't want it wet when you put the stuff onto the stone. All right, and then I literally just mush it on there. It sticks really well. So in the past, I've like ran out of my mixed putty and I've only put like half on there like this. It's okay to put some on now and then make another batch and put it on there later. It blends really well. And when you go to sand the back, it actually blends and you can't tell where you put on two separate batches. So we're slowly mushing it over. I might need just a little bit more. I like my putty to be a little bit thicker than necessary because I don't mind flattening, like taking it to a flat lap or sanding it. I'd rather have to apply more and have it thicker before I sand it than having the backing too thin where it's not really doing its job. So it does look like I'm going to have to apply a little bit more, mix up a little bit more for my tastes. Most of the time, I don't worry too much about getting it to the very end of the stone because it usually gets a little bit of it gets removed when I'm cabbing anyway. All right, I'm gonna mix up just a little bit more. In my opinion, it's better to need to mix up a little bit more than having way too much that's gonna go to waste or that's gonna start to harden before you can get it onto the stone. Because when it, it does stick to the stone, while it's still soft, but by the time it starts to harden, it really loses its stickiness. Sometimes you will get it on the face of your stone where you're going to be cabbing. And that's not such a bad thing if you're going to be cabbing it. If it's a very, very thin stone and you're not going to be taking your stone to like 80 grit and 220 grit hard wheels, that could be a problem. In this case, it is not a problem. All right, so after I get it on there, I kind of like to flatten it out and even it out a bit by pressing it onto something. This will help even it out a little bit. Some people don't mind if it's even, but I think, you know, a part of the reason why we're doing this, at least for some people, is to make it sit into jewelry better. And if it's like thicker on one side and thinner on the other, it kind of defeats the purpose. All right, I'm not too worried about textures and stuff that's left behind because we're gonna flatten this out pretty uniform. But help it out a little bit. All right, that's that piece. Then I just put it upside down and let it sit there. Cut off another piece. All right. So we're gonna fill this a little bit. So I'll kind of start it right there and pull it across from the section that I am trying to fill. Yeah, put a little bit too much, but that's fine. It's gonna be easily removed with sanding or flat lapping. This stuff does start to stick to my gloves after a while. It's pretty annoying when I have to back dozens of pieces it gets very annoying and i end up changing my gloves a couple times again it doesn't have to be perfect i'm gonna squish some down and pull it over into this crack right here 
Oh, yeah. So I do wait just a little tiny bit before I squish it against something flat because it can stick to the surface of what you're squishing against depending on what it is. I do feel like this stuff it can easily stick to the cardboard. I'm gonna wait a... Ugh. All right, so I dropped it on the ground. Got some like little pieces of dirt or sand in there. It's really not a big deal. If it's on the surface, most likely it's gonna get grinded out when we sand it anyway. But I don't like doing that. All right, I think it's hard enough to get a good mush on. Push it up against something flat. Kind of even it out a little bit. See some of this stuff blowing out on the side. I'm not too worried about getting that. I'll take care of that when I lap it later. So I dropped right here and I kind of chipped the stone. So I'm actually gonna take some of the blowout and shove it in there. That stinks, but it'll be okay. This is getting pretty hard, so it's getting hard to maneuver the material. But there we go, we got the tip enough. It's gonna get grinded anyway. Got some stuff on the face. It's not a big deal because it's thick enough to grind away, but if yours is thinner, you might want to try not to do that. All right, so we're gonna leave these two pieces here for maybe five minutes. It does settle very quickly you can, and you can work it a lot faster than like epoxy. To put it away, I just wrap it back up, throw it in the tube. I've had this stuff last months and months and months and months without going bad on me. So I do not know what the expiration date on these things are, how long it takes them to go bad, but they last a long time. These are nice and dry. Definitely hard enough to be worked. I'll do one of these on the flat lap and I'll do the other by hand. I think I'll do this number eight by hand on some sandpaper. And for my flat surface today, I will be using a old abandoned guitar body that I didn't finish about eight years ago. Almost looks like an ice man with a little tail. It's a white oak. Maybe I'll finish it one day. But in the meantime, it is gonna be our hard flat surface. I'm gonna be using some 220 wet and dry sandpaper. I'm gonna go ahead and just mist a bit. Have you guys ever heard about like putting this stuff in like water and just soaking it? I've seen a lot of videos of it on YouTube. Never really tried it. I've always kind of just dipped it in water. All right, in just a few seconds, we already got it flushing out, taking out a lot of those inconsistencies. It's gonna be a while till we take this pit down here and got a little pit here. I'm not too worried about the stuff on the end because I'll take care of that when I work the girdle. But if you are, you maybe just take a little bit more time and get this thing as flat as you think you need. All right, we're getting there. Sometimes you'll get this like little discoloration marks there and there and a little whites and grays, dark blacks. That kind of just seems to be the way this stuff works. Here's a piece that I finished a while on a flat lap. Yeah, you get some pits and you get some little discoloration spots. I don't know what that's from, like if I didn't blend it good enough or if that's just the way this JB Weld works, but it's really not a big deal. Almost done. Yeah, it's pretty good. There's a pit right here. Not a big deal. When I take this to the machine and I girdle it up, it'll be fine. Even though it's unnecessary because I'm going to take it to the machine and work the girdle with the machine, especially when I flat lap, I do hit the sides to see how thick the backing formula is where. It's a little inconsistent here and there, thicker spots than others, and it's actually not 100% flat by the way I was sand because of the way I was sanding it, but it's gonna be fine. 
and totally good. Definitely gonna be strong enough to cab now. I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece of Kingman wherever I put it, ah, right here. Take this to the flat lap. All right, so the flat lap I'm using is a tile saw with a flat lap disc on top of it. I love my ghetto tile saw. Flat lap. Oh yeah, makes very short work of working this backing formula. Little inconsistencies right here on the side. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten it until it comes down to that point. All right, so that's that. A little bit thicker on that side than the other side, but it'll be all right. It's not an even piece anyway. So the backing actually kind of evens it out. You can see here where it filled in that crack. And then again here at the top. I don't have to, but I'm gonna go ahead and just flat lap all this stuff off of the top. All right. I'm actually gonna come back and finish flattening the piece of number eight. I could do it on the sandpaper. This is just much quicker. Here are the two pieces after polishing. Great finish. All of the other number eight that I had and that was given to me just wasn't able to be worked without being stabilized. So I go ahead and back them up. It evened it out just a little bit. So now it stands flush, perfect for silver or gold jewelry. And this piece of came in just would not have made it. It was cracked. I filled in the cracks with glue, then backed it, which really stabilized it and made it super strong. Great finish. Love the green. I hope this helps somebody out there. Maybe I'll make some more videos in the future using different backing formulas. But JB Weld Steel Stick is just the easiest, most commonly used backing formula that I've seen over the years. Anywho, go out there and back your stones that you think aren't going to make it if you cut them, that are too fragile, or maybe if you even repair them. If you repair a piece using super glue or whatever kind of glue epoxy, back it and cab it. It'll work great. Until next time, my friends. I love you. See you soon.